Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to find the rate of change of the volume of a balloon or a ball with respect to time. Now, we understand that the equation for the volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed, but that's relative to the radius. It's as a function of the radius. If we find that the volume as a function of time is equal to 4 thirds pi times the quantity, t squared plus 5 raised to the 3 halves power, then how do we find the rate of change of the volume with respect to time? In other words, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the dv dt. And we want to do so when time is equal to 2. Now, to help us understand it a little bit more, I've written down the volume for at when t is 0 seconds, 1 second, 2 seconds, and 3 seconds, and we can assume that this is in cubic centimeters or cubic inches or cubic meters, it doesn't matter. Cubic meters would be a big balloon. But anyway, this is what the volumes would be, and what we're going to do is find out how fast the volume is changing with respect to time when the time is equal to 2 seconds and when the volume at that point is 113.1. So notice that if we didn't have the second equation, we wouldn't be able to do it because we only would have the volume as a function of the radius. We need the volume as a function of the time. So dv dt would simply be the rate of change of the volume with respect to time, the rate of change of this equation with respect to time. So when we can then write that dv dt is equal to, well, we have a constant here, which is 4 thirds pi times the derivative of this. So we take the... the uh, Exponent down, this is 3 over 2 times t squared plus 5. Subtract 1 from the exponent to the 1 half power. And then we take the derivative of what's inside, which would be times 2t. Now we can simplify that one a little bit. Uh, let's see, here we have a 2 and a 2. We have a 3 and a 3. So this is equal to 4 pi t times the quantity t squared plus 5 to the one-half power. So now we have an equation that tells us the change of the volume with respect to time is equal to this equation. Then, if we're trying to find an actually, what I can do here, this is the v, what I'm doing here is saying that this is as a function of the time here. So now we can go ahead and evaluate that function when the volume, well, let's see here, the volume here will be 113.1, and when time is equal to 2. Now notice, we don't need to know what the volume is at that time because the function here, the dv dt, is only a function of time, not of the volume. So all we have to do now is simply plug in t equals 2 to get the answer. So we can say that the change of the volume with respect to time, when the time is equal to 2, and that all we have to do now is plug in 2 here, so we can say that this is 4 pi times 2, times the quantity 2 squared plus 5 to the 1 half power. Of course, this is 9, and 9 to the 1 half power is 3, so this would be equal to 4 pi times 2 times 3, or 6 times 4, 24 pi, which is roughly, if three, you know, pi is a little bit more than 3, so you can say this is somewhere between 75 and 80. Uh, and then if we go over here and notice, if we add about 80 to this, we get almost the next value, of course. We know that the dvdt is increasing over time as well, but you can see that seems to be like a reasonable number. Again, understand when we ask for a different change of rate, or rate of change, I should say. In this case, if we have this equation, we can find the dvdr. If we have this equation, we can find the dvdt. The rate of change of the volume with respect to the radius, the rate of change of the volume with respect to time. And that's how it's done.